Let's look at setting up the Chauvin Arnu CA8336 Qualistar Power and Quality Analyzer. First of all, switch on the product by pushing on the green button. When you do this, it goes through a setup process, checking its own firmware and checking the SD card that's installed. Once the product is powered up, you'll notice there are several buttons. The functions of the top row of yellow keys are always described on the screen above them, and these are called fast keys. On the left-hand side, there are four more keys. The top one takes you back up one level from any menu. The key with a picture of a spanner on it is a setup key. The key with a picture of a camera on it enables you to take a screenshot at any point. And below that, there's a help key. And here we have the four standard cursor keys and an enter key. The usage of these six keys will become apparent as we move through the product, but essentially they take you from screen to screen, looking at watts, alarms, the waveform, the harmonics, etc. The first thing we're going to do is to show you the setup menu by pressing the setup key. This takes us to a display where we can see and change the date and time, the display contrast, calculation methods, the electrical connection, the current sensors and ratios we've connected, the capture mode, trend mode and alarm mode. We can also erase the memory and check the firmware version of the product. You'll also notice the fast keys, but in this particular mode you can select the different language options. Setting the date and time, display contrast and calculation methods are all self-explanatory. So let's go straight into selecting the electrical connections. Highlight electrical connection, press enter, and by pressing the right cursor key, you'll be able to see the various electrical connections. Select the one that's appropriate to the installation you're connecting to and press enter. Next, go to sensors and ratios and press enter. At the moment, no sensors are plugged into the product. As soon as I plug one in, You'll see the Qualistar has detected an Ampflex Rogowski coil has been connected. While the Qualistar automatically detects what sort of clamp is connected or plugged into it, with some of the clamps, you'll also have the option to change the measurement range. This particular flexi clamp will measure from 100 milliamps to 10,000 amps. But if you're connecting to an installation which is not going to have more than 100 amps flowing through it, you should select the 100 milliamp to 100 amp position. Press the Enter key, and then the up-down arrows. This will take you to another range. This gives you from 10 amps to 10,000 amps. Or for slightly lower current, but better resolution, we can have between 10.0 and 6,500 amps. On this screen, you can also set the transformer ratios for high voltage supply connections. But for low voltage connections of 220 volts or 400 volts phase to phase, there'll be no ratio here. The next key position down allows us to set a threshold for transients. This is called capture mode. In other words, when recordings will be triggered by an over voltage, the level of which is decided by the user. I can select any level I want. So here I'm selecting to see only transients that are above 1000 volts. On the smart keys, if I move from voltage to current, it's exactly the same, but now I'm determining the current transient above which I want to keep a recording. So here, it's set to 1000 amps. And if I want to move down and press enter, then I can use the cursor keys again to set any transient current I want. Here I've told the instrument I'm only interested in current transients above 500 amps. Within capture mode, we can also set up the parameters for motor inrush current. So by pressing the fast button here for inrush, selecting enter, we can set a current limit above which inrush currents will be measured. The next setup screen down is trend mode. And in trend mode, we tell the product what parameters to record. So in trend one at the moment, we have all of the parameters selected. We've got volts RMS, Amps RMS, Voltage Peak, Positive Peak, Negative Peak, Power Factor, 
phase angle, cos, phi, etc. And there are two pages of parameters for each trend. So this is page one, and with the fast key, we can go to page two and back to page one. There are four trend modes that can be configured to measure the parameters I want. Moving along to trend two, if I was only interested in voltages and not currents, it's easy to select or deselect each parameter I want. Additionally, this key can be used to select every parameter, and this one to deselect every parameter. The next position down is alarm mode. So I press the down key, hit enter, and here we enter the alarm mode setup screen. I have 40 different alarms that I'm able to set. And you can see here that by using the fast key, we can go to those different pages of alarms. At the top of page one, I can select whatever voltage, current, etc. I want the alarms to be applied to. For example, either volts RMS or amps RMS. I can also set up alarms on frequency. Now I'm going to leave this set to all three voltage phases, and I'll set an alarm to trigger if any of those voltages drops to less than 205 volts. I hit the enter to store the alarm setting. As well as setting the voltage threshold, it is possible to set a threshold for duration two, right down to one one hundredth of a second, therefore deciding how sensitive the alarm will be. The next setup key down enables me to erase the product's memory. I can either erase trend recordings, any transient detections, inrush captures, alarm detections, or any snapshots. Or I can, in fact, erase the setup and go back to default settings. Having now set the product up, if I were to press the waveform button, I'd get a live display. Now for this demonstration, this product is connected to three phases of voltage and three phases of current. You can see here, highlighted in yellow, that we have up and down arrows. This shows me which waveform is being displayed on the screen at any point in time. At the moment, three phase-to-phase -phase voltages. If I push down on the cursor, now you're looking at three phase-to-neutral voltages. Press down again, and you're looking at three different currents, and so on. On the fast keys, we're able to look at total harmonic distortion. Also, we can select crest factor, or we can select min and max. So it shows us the minimum and maximum RMS positive and negative peaks of the currents and voltages we're looking at. The last button takes us to a vector diagram. The next mode key here shows you the actual quantity of each of the harmonics. And if I were to add some harmonics to the waveform we're looking at, you'll see the values increase. The next mode key along shows us the transient and inrush current start and stop times. This allows us to pick the point in time where I'd like the product to start and stop monitoring transients, and how many I'd like to monitor, starting from one up to 210. At the bottom here, we're also able to give the recording a name. Selecting inrush current, we can do exactly the same as we just did on the transient screen. Here we have the watt mode key. Pushing this displays the instantaneous power. And here, on the fast keys, power factor. Pressing the sine wave takes us back to live recording. To set up recording of alarms, select alarm mode key. Then repeat the process of start time, stop time, and name the file that I demonstrated earlier. Then I press the record fast key. This puts the tester into standby mode. To record trends, press the record mode key, then the file fast key. I then ensure that I select the correct trend mode, either one, two, three, or four, that I set earlier. Then select the start stop time, and select the period to decide what aggregate time we need. The default is 10 minutes, but it has a range of between one second and up to 15 minutes. Remember though that quicker aggregate times will result in much larger data and storage requirements. The 10 minute default is generally considered sufficient for most applications. 
Again, each recording can be given a unique file name by entering it here. I have two options to start a recording. My first option is for instant start record. However, the aggregate period defaults to one second and can't be changed. And the name of the file defaults to trend, which can't be changed on the device. Alternatively, press record, which will put the device into standby mode and will start recordings with all the specified settings. The next button to be considered here is the snapshot button that literally takes a capture of whatever screen you have displayed. When pressing and holding the button, a small camera appears in the top corner. If I now momentarily press it, it takes us to this screen, showing the snapshot for the date and time. Pressing enter will bring up that snapshot on the display. To go back to the live recording, you just press the waveform key. The final button to mention is the help key. This will display relevant function information tailored to the screen you're currently on.